guys, let's talk about advertising. Okay, so I want to raise three sort of separate matters. One is the question of endogenous preferences, one is the question of uh, truth in advertising, and one is the question of um, uh, stereotypes and targeted marketing. Okay, endogenous preferences. Economists sometimes distinguish between endogenous and exogenous preferences. An exogenous preference um, or a preference that's exogenous to a particular market is a preference that people bring to the market from outside. So you have certain ex and exogenous preferences. For example, you want to um, uh, you want to have friends. You want to uh, be well fed. You want to be physically comfortable. You don't want to be in pain. You don't want to be too hot or too cold. So these are preferences which you didn't um, you weren't sort of taught by. Um, uh, the type of society that you live in or the markets in particular, the markets in which you participate to have these preferences. These are preferences that you brought in from the outside. That's what it means to say that they're exogenous. Okay. Other preferences are preferences which are created by the markets that we participate in. Um, this is what in the story of bottled water they call manufactured demand. So sometimes we want things, uh, we want to purchase things in a market because because uh, we participate in the market. Um, so, you know, um, you go to a store and you're convinced to buy some really cool new item and you wouldn't have thought it was cool if you hadn't seen it at the store, but there you go. Uh, yeah, I think like Supreme is a really good example of this. Nothing against Supreme, but you know, something against Supreme. You know, it's a little ridiculous that these sweatshirts that just say Supreme on them uh, uh, cost a zillion dollars, right? Um, Nobody would think this were cool unless uh, they were participating in this sort of market where, you know, Supreme is this prestigious brand and so on. Um, in uh, our meetings, people gave other examples of endogenous preferences like um, uh, desire for sort of useless new pieces of technology, like the new iPhone compared with the old iPhone. Um, uh, uh, people gave the example of sort of uh, impulse purchases on, on, you know, Instagram where they looked at things afterwards and they said, wait a second, why the fuck did I buy that? That's completely useless. I would never have wanted that if I hadn't seen this stupid ad. Okay, okay. Endogenous preferences aren't necessarily a bad thing. So it could be that you learn about some good from an advertisement and that advertisement teaches you about some really cool thing. That's great. You learn, about, you learn about the thing from an advertisement, that's great. But sometimes endogenous preferences make us want our preferences that reflect things that aren't actually good for us. We come to want things that don't benefit us in any way, or perhaps they benefit us in some really marginal way, but there are externalities to the transaction. So in the case of bottled water, maybe you slightly prefer bottled water. Um, it, your, your life is made slightly better by purchasing bottled water rather than using tap water. But there are so many externalities to the transaction. It costs the environment, it costs the rest of the world so much for us to you know, drink one little bottle of water that it's not worth it. Okay, so one thing that you wanna ask yourself when you're um, advertising are, okay, if I'm creating endogenous preference, am I speaking to endogenous preferences or exogenous preferences? And if I'm creating endogenous preferences, am I creating preferences that will actually make people's lives better? Am I actually selling shit that is going to improve people's lives or is going to improve people's lives enough to sort of justify this market transaction uh, at all? This is a tricky question, but I think it's worth asking because I think we live in a world of, in some respects, in a world of, of, of uh, hyper consumption where people are constantly expecting that the next little uh, trinket that they buy is going to somehow finally make them happy and um, spoiler alert, it doesn't. Okay, so you wanna ask yourself if you're in, a, in the advertising business or if you're really in any kind of business where you're selling some sort of good or service that is uh, uh, that there is a potentially endogenous preference for, ask yourself, is this, is this really going to make people's lives better? Is it really worth it? Okay. Um, now, um, when we talk about advertising, I think the main question that people sort of m ask morally about advertising and marketing and product design sort of related phenomena um, is uh, that uh, is the question, is, is the advertisement telling the truth? Okay, um, I just want to flag that 
there are more than there's more than one way to uh, deceive somebody. So you know, often we think, well, either you're telling the truth or you're lying, and that's it. You're saying something that you really believe, or you're um, saying something that you don't really believe. But there are other ways of deceiving people than saying something you don't really believe. One way is to say something that you believe, say something that is, as far as you know, perfectly true, but to sort of imply or suggest something that's not true. So, um, uh, um, an advertisement might um, uh, say that uh, some uh, toothpaste is doctor recommended. And I think what this means is that, you know, what, what, what this literally means is that some doctor recommended it, right? But um, what people take out of that is that, uh, well, lots of doctors recommend it, or, you know, it's recommended by the uh, American Medical Academy or something like that, that it's recommended by the majority of doctors, whatever it is. And that's not necessarily true. Okay, so sometimes you can deceive people by saying things that are literally true, that you literally believe, but which are in other ways uh, misleading. You're implying something, you're suggesting something that's false. Um, uh, and if you're suggesting something that's false or that you don't believe uh, and it really matters, well, that's a problem. Okay. Um, another thing is that you can say something that you actually really believe, but for which you lack any sufficient evidence. So in the truth and advertising timeline, they give the example of um, airborne, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, cough remedy, uh, or the cold remedy, rather. Uh, and, you know, they, they made all these, the people who designed the product and sold the product made all sorts of claims about its medical benefits. I think that it's a very, it's very likely that they actually believed that, that they actually believed that Airborne worked to, you know, cut down, you know, you know, dramatically improve people who had colds, you know, cure people's colds or whatever. I really, I, I think, I, I think it's very likely that they actually believed it. The problem is that you can't just go around saying stuff if you don't have any sufficient evidence for it. So you can deceive people by um, uh, making a confident statement which suggests to the people around you that you have evidence for that confident statement, that you can back that statement up, but in fact, you can't. Okay, so um, this is one sort of uh, deception. So, okay, so in addition to lying, we also have misleading and, um, uh, uh, you know, implying or suggesting things that are false without actually coming out and saying them and saying things without sufficient evidence. Lastly, on the subject of stereotypes. Well, you know, the way that advertising and marketing and product design often work is things are targeted towards particular demographic groups. And, um, Sometimes the way that you target a demographic group is through, um, or the historically the ways that people have targeted demographic groups is through sort of stereotypes about that group. Um, uh, you know, that uh, you want to sell something to, um, uh, you know, housewives or something like that, and you, you know, put them in a little sundress and you know, you have them sort of looking adoringly at their husbands and, you know, they live in an, uh, you know, a nice little house in the suburbs or whatever. And, uh, you know, all they want to do is sort of serve their families or something like that. Okay, so you, know, you might, this might creep you out a little bit. Sometimes, this is a long way of saying that sometimes targeted marketing plays to stereotypes about the targeted demographic and that these stereotypes can be dangerous. So in the case of the uh, uh, dinner time in article in the Atlantic, some dangerous features of the stereotypes about black families could be that they're sort of especially rowdy or especially cheap, um, uh, you know, aren't interested in doing the dishes. You know, these are dangerous stereotypes about black people. Um, uh, the ways that products are often designed for girls with, you know, sort of cute but idle stuff attached to them. So sort of, you know, it's just sort of clouds and, uh, you know, kittens and uh, and princesses. Things that don't actually, like, do anything. Whereas the things that are used to market to boys are like, you know, uh, construction workers and cops and firemen. People who are out there doing shit. People who are out there in the world being effective and so on. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, you want to ask yourself, are we playing to dangerous stereotypes? Are we reinforcing or perpetuating dangerous stereotypes? What can you do to prevent this? Well, for starters, you can ask yourself, um, uh, is there a member of the relevant group in the in the room? So if somebody so if somebody who's 
a member of if somebody's black or somebody's a woman in the room, they're going to be sensitive to anti-black stereotypes, anti-woman stereotypes in a way that the average white guy typically isn't. Okay, that's one possibility. Another possibility is to focus group things or to uh, have some sort of internal sensitivity training in companies. Now, sensitivity training, people often roll their eyes at that and rightly given the way that it's often practiced. But, you know, uh, doing something as a company to indicate that you give a shit about this stuff and that, you know, th that you want to be vigilant about things like stereotypes. Okay. Um, that's that. Great.